Akeen Raybon, great to have you. I want to start off with uh, one of the funnier mix in the waters I think we've seen here from Kevin at, oh uh, yeah, that's a tremendous Twitter handle. His mix in the water, I think we will uh, unanimously decide that uh, Kevin needs to mix in a water. Giants money line. They're currently getting 16 points against Dallas this week. Stucky, I saw you already log into the award-winning action app, Dallas minus 16. So I'm guessing Kevin needs to mix in a water. Yeah. The, I mean, they're starting Tommy DeVito at quarterback who had a transfer from Syracuse because he couldn't start there. I mean, the, the only quarterback that I've had graded worse than Tommy DeVito over, I mean, since I've been doing this is when uh, Kendall Hinton had to start at quarterback for the Broncos and yeah. he's a receiver. And I think they were catching 17 in that game um, and the total plummeted. And he, I think he finished one of eight um, in the game. So Tommy DeVito is horrendous, uh, and he's behind a horrendous offensive line against this Dallas defense. I mean, Dallas already beat the Giants, what, 38 nothing early in the season? Dallas against inferior teams this year, besides the Cardinals, when they're good, they just blow teams out of the water. And most importantly, the Dallas offense is back. I talked about this going into the Eagles game, the game you know, they should have covered last week. Their offense dominated the Eagles. I mean, Dak threw for 400 yards. Uh, they were just, Everyone was eating, and that offense going up and down the field they're throwing on early downs um it's Dax in rhythm he's using his legs like there's he's gonna pick apart this Giants defense this Dallas offense is trending in the right direction they have a top five defense against Tommy DeVito I don't know how the Giants score they're just gonna play man on the outside and load the box DeVito's gonna have multiple turnovers um and, and this Dallas offense should put up 24 plus so I, I, yeah mixing a while I don't see any path like any path for the giants to win this game uh it would take i mean the cowboys would have to just fumble every kickoff uh that, that's it You're mixing a water mixing multiple waters go huh. go to aa <laughs> ray bond this person we have a great response here uh tiny toe tap says to this person i will give you a hundred to one odds minimum minimum two hundred fifty dollar bet. So this guy's saying I'll book you on it, Giants money line. I'll give you a hundred to one. It's it's eight to one if you bet it at bet three six five. But what do you think of this interaction and Tony Toe Tap saying I'll book you on it? I mean a hundred to one. He probably needs to mix in a water too, uh, just because if they play this game a hundred times, maybe the Giants win one, maybe, but. Uh, whoever's trying to bet the Giants money line, I agree with Stuck. You got to mix in the water. I mean, they can't block. You're going against Dallas's pass rush. You go. You, your defense is shaky. You're going against uh, a rejuvenated Dallas offense. I, and Tommy DeVito. I mean, what's he supposed to do? I just like Stucky said. I, I don't see a pass. And you know, sometimes you see these lines, and you know, I think Stuck. What did you bet on Garrett Gilbert once, where he was like. You know, plus 10, plus, plus, plus 14, 14, I think. Yeah. yeah. And like, so like sometimes you can see a path and, you know, one, it, it's not as big of a mismatch as, as it, you know, as the number on paper looks, but this one, I, I just don't see it. I, you know, maybe Dallas doesn't cover, maybe, you know, maybe they just come on a little sleepy, but uh, I don't see any way that they lose the game. I, I would, uh, so I would assume the folks that like the Giants are pointing to when they played Buffalo. And it was a 14-9 game. Now, it was Tyrod Taylor, not Tommy DeVito, a quarterback. And Stucky just made his point that he grades not many people, if if any at all, above Tommy DeVito. But that's the path, I think. If yeah, but here, thinking, here's the thing. No, no, I, I'm, I'm only bringing that up because that, I'm no, just trying I, to I got it, that. But Tyrod Taylor is a starting ca- – I, I have Ty, Tyrod Taylor rated ahead of Daniel Jones. Like, he's a starting caliber quarterback. Uh Okay. in the NFL and Tommy DeVito is one of the worst of all time that we've ever seen. <laughs> and horrible. so it is going from like a starting, like even though you're back, you're it's your backup. He's a, he's a starter caliber going to the one of the worst of all time. Also, I bet the giants in that game, the bills defense has been a bottom five unit since all of their injuries. The Cowboys defense is a top five defense in the NFL, like it, night and day on, uh, on the defenses that you're facing here. And so, uh, yeah, I just, I don't see the path. There's going to be multiple turn. I mean, look, last week, 
against the bottom five defense in, in the Raiders, who just let you do whatever you want efficiently, just don't give up explosives. And against Aiden O'Connell with Tommy DeVito, the Giants lost 30 to six. <laughs> I, like the, the, I, I, I never lay over two, like never. And I laid over two touchdowns in this game. And they're going to get an angry Dallas team that just, yeah. you know, came so close to beating their heated rival. And now they're going to go and take it all out on a, on a poor Giants. And who knows where the Giants, uh, you know, are at mentally because, you know, their, their quarterback just went down. You know, all their best players, except for, you know, Saquon Barkley really uh, are hurt. You know, it's, I mean, this it's they just might, Pack it in, like I, you know, you never know. You could just catch, but the like they lost thirty six to the Raiders, and now they got to go play an angry Dallas team. Not the spot. It could, know? it could be forty five to nine. It could look like a, it could look like a, you know, an SEC team playing a bad conference USA team. All right, all Rare, right. you rarely see that in the NFL, but this, this would be the spot. Okay, all right, very good. I get it. I understand. Very good. Dallas is a favorite more than a touchdown. Dak's great. McCarthy's good. No look ahead spot to playing Carolina next week. Let's move on. Uh, another underdog that uh, some folks like Jared and Tyler there share their thoughts on Twitter against Stucky and Raybon kind enough to go to Twitter this morning. So we could field tweets. They are liking the Denver Broncos. They are an underdog of more than a touchdown. Seven and a half is where it currently sits. They are at Buffalo this week. So speaking of Buffalo, they they played down to their competition when they played the Giants and they barely escaped 14-9. Here are the Bills off a loss. And the folks here, Jared and Tyler, Stucky, they like Denver at north of plus 300 on the money line. Do Jared and Tyler need to mix in a water? No, uh, I think they're okay here. I said, look, it's a great spot, a bounce back spot for Buffalo. But I think there's some value in the number with Denver. Like the market just refuses to price this Buffalo team like they have a bad defense now. And they do. Uh, it's a bottom five defense since week five. If you go by any metric, they lost, you know, three all pro caliber players at every level of the D and I don't, you know, Denver coming off of a buy here does two things. The script should be really good. So you can get some points early on and their defense has improved dramatically. They made some schematic changes. They got some guys back healthy mm-hmm. and, you know, I mean, they look, they held down the chiefs two games in a row and you know, for three straight games, their def- I mean, they were trending towards one of the worst defenses of all time. The Buffalo offense is still really good, grades out really well. But something just looks off, too. I don't know what's going on. And Buffalo can't – I mean, they, they're zone-heavy defense anyway. They can't really play man now without Trey White. Russell Wilson and that offense have been shredding zone defenses this year. Can't play against man. And they can run the ball here. You got a, a healthy Javante Williams against a, a Bills defense that you can run on. And now there's coverage holes without Milano and White. So I don't hate this. You know, it's a, I would expect the Bills to win, but it's a decent price to back Denver with a rejuvenated defense and a good matchup for the offense. Coming off a bye should get a good script. So no water needed. Let's do a car bomb. Hey, Raybon, how about how about you, Raybon? I know you're – typically when we do a segment like this, you're like, just take the points, take the touchdown and a half point. But Denver on the money line. Do these guys have to mix in a water? No, not at all. Buffalo is just not the same elite team that we've been seeing for the last, you know, what, year and a half, two years. It is, the defense is, is not playing well right now. They're banged up. And the offense, like Stucky said, it's a little off. And this, like you, this is exactly what you want in a money line bet. Denver went from the worst defense statistically to shutting down Mahomes twice in three weeks and, you know, some rapid improvement. So this kind of variance, uncertainty, you know, how how is this Denver defense for real? Can they keep can they keep it up? Uh, you know, can the offense get better and, you know, kind of build on what they've been doing early in games? There's just a lot of uncertainty, a lot of room for improvement uh, for Denver, especially compared to their season-long numbers. Kind of like reminds me a little bit of uh, Cincinnati when, you know, they started the season so poorly that – uh, they started just being a value uh, on the number because, you know, obviously you're going to still incorporate some of that past season data. So same thing with Denver. Like I, I'm pretty sure their defensive metrics, like DVOA and stuff, they're still like 31st, 32nd, but mm-hmm. they've been playing a lot better than that. So I actually think, I mean, sure, you know, if you want to take the points, but I don't, I don't mind the money line at all. I think this is the perfect situation for a money line dog. Okay. Very good. Um, Ray Bond. Well, yeah, next time. I- yeah, I have to ask you, Ray Bond, here. We have another one from uh, Darth Sizzle. Ray Ray McLeod overs. This hits a 
this hits a uh, sweet spot with you, Ray Ray McLeod. You probably need a Ray Ray McLeod jersey for the amount of Ray Ray McLeod unders you bet. So what are we doing? What, what's the bet? Ray Ray McLeod over? Yeah, what? overs. Do they need to mix in a water? Uh, yes, because first of all, why are we ever taking Ray Ray McLeod overs? Like I don't, <laughs> I, I like when I see Ray Ray McLeod around, I only see one side of it, and that's the under. But uh, you should get Debo Samuel back if Debo Samuel comes back. Uh, McLeod's probably only going to run three to five routes in this game. So uh, you know Jennings will be the third receiver. Uh, so I, I don't foresee him getting on the field much uh, on offense as long as Debo's back. Now Debo, you know, can barely, you know, he's like Christian Watson these days. He can barely get through a game. So you know, if Debo gets hurt, McLeod is the Debo backup. So that, yeah, that's just the way quick, you would kind of hit. The, but the reporting on Debo, he appears to have no limitations while going through individual and group drills. That was uh, yeah. earlier on, in, this week. So he was out. Yeah, so mixing the water, mixing the water. Yeah, um, Ray Ray McLeod. Clemson legend, by the way, Stucky, I know you don't bet uh, player props too often. So you know, I doubt you have a strong take on the matter. So unless you do, unless you do. Ray, Ray, I don't know. No, of course. I don't have, I don't have a, take, a strong take on the Ray, Ray, Ray McLeod the prop market. Um, but they say, you know, teams that just like have a running back that like runs it three yards and they just try to run, methodically run it down the field with no explosiveness. They always say like, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust. Uh, we call call him Ray Ray McLeod of dust. I don't know. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. I got. I got nothing here. Stucky, can I ask you another question? Then we talked about the uncertainty with kind of this uh, Broncos team that uh, started out poorly, playing better. This Bills team, this offense, leaves you scratching your head at times. This season overall, I feel like there has been more uncertainty and more variance than in recent NFL seasons. Am I hot or cold there? Uh, cold. You're probably you're probably losing money and reaching. Um, there's a lot of bad. There's a, there's a lot of bad. There's a lot of bad quarterback play. So that yeah, I mean, a lot of backup quarterbacks, and so that's what's increasing the variance. Um, scoring's lower, right? So lower scoring games, you're going to have more variance, just generally speaking. But it's a lot of backup. Last last week, nine backup quarterbacks started. We're down to Tommy DeVito. Yeah, I mean, I mean for how out, you Tommy handy, DeVito how starting you... an NFL game. How are you handicapping this poor quarterback play aside from the uh, burn to start your answer last time? Uh, I just, I threw out all of my models. I don't spend any time reading and I just bet prime time unders. That's the way to go. Um, <laughs> so there's nothing else to it anymore, but uh, yeah, there's not, there's, there's not yeah, There's just been bad quarterback play and uh, lower scoring environment, less explosiveness, lower depth of target. That's what you're going to get with these lower scoring games. Um, so yeah, by the way, you mentioned the Broncos and their offense. Like, th there's also, like, just a big – there's, like, se seven teams that are good, and then the rest yeah. are awful. Um, so that that's part of it, too. There's just not as many as good teams. There's so many more bad teams. Um, and, you know, Bryce Young has been way worse mm -hmm. than the Panthers thought, so they've just been completely irrelevant. Stroud has been a pleasant surprise. But you mentioned the Broncos and the Packers. Like, Packer, there's another quarterback that's been disappointing – and Jordan Love, but like because there's such a lack of, I don't know, I'd say there's like seven teams that can win the Super Bowl realistically. What we should just for the rest of the season combine the Broncos and Packers <laughs> because they're if you take the Broncos first half offense and the Packers second half offense, they have enough. And then look, you got Sertain and Alexander okay. uh, on the outside, they have enough talent uh to compete in the nfl this is, so this is why in the that's nfl why it's admirable yeah we can combine halfway through the season you combine teams uh and then you switch up the prime time schedule we don't need to watch panthers bears and like like look i have some stuck fun stuck it. stuck mixing the water bro yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's off the rails you can't you can't combine nfl teams but All i will right. say this to your point to your point real quick uh tim i think the one thing to like be mindful of handicapping is because we have all these bad quarterbacks you're going to see a lot of quarterbacks that shouldn't be favored being favored especially on the road like even, like look at this week we have zach wilson favored on the road tara heineke favored on the road Derek uh, Carr. Know, yeah yeah car i mean he's like mediocre but yeah you know kenny pickett's a favorite like there's just so many uh bad 
quarterback. Gardner Minshew is a favorite. Like, you know, there are just so many bad quarterbacks that are, you know, weighing points. And that's really how you have to kind of attack this market. Like, you know, you can't just say, oh, well, you know, that's the, I think that's the better team. And, you know, you know, to hell with the quarterbacks. It's like, no, like that's the opportunity when you're getting these terrible quarterbacks. Cause it's really, you know, there's so much. Except the Giants. Turnovers. Except the Giants. Yeah. Except, except the Giants. But they, they're not favorite. That's the point. Like yeah. DeVito's not a favorite. But yeah, like that, that's something I've been kind of, you know, looking, like seeing a lot of this year. You know, it's just bad quarterbacks are favorite. That's when you kind of take advantage uh, and, and bet the other side, even if it's going to feel, it's going to feel disgusting because it's two bad quarterbacks. So you're betting on probably a, an even worse quarterback or a similar quarterback as an underdog. But that's the point. Bad quarterbacks. Favor, you shouldn't lay points with bad quarterbacks, especially on a road. Okay. All right. Well, in this case, let's oh, go right, to let, me ask, night. let me ask Rayvon this though, real quick. Rayvon. Mm-hmm. Look oh, at you guys. introduced him. Jesus. Bad, bad quarterback on the road, mm-hmm. laying points. Um, and you want to fade, and that's I agree. That's the way to attack this. In a couple weeks, Mac Jones favored on the road at Tommy DeVito. Are you taking the <laughs> Giants? <laughs> oh, I uh no. We need we need. <laughs> We'll we need to decide. I'm just probably not touching that game. Who knows? You know, apparently, according to the rumors, Belichick might not even be coaching by then. So who knows? Oh, I on. I opened this can of worms. Clash, take us off. <laughs>